Mm. Coffee has literally been my lifesaver the past few weeks. In the last vlog, I mentioned we would only be up north a couple weeks, but it has been well over a couple weeks and we're actually planning on staying here for a couple months. Alex and I actually terminated our lease at our old condo. So we're gonna go back to Toronto, pack all our stuff and come back and quarantine with Alex's family and figure out a place to live after. So that's a little bit hectic, but in other news, good morning. It's been two months since I've released my album and it's making me really happy to see that you guys are liking it and it's keeping you company during these quarantine times. I think This Is What A Broken Heart Feels Like has over two million plays now, which is insane. And my single, This Is What Self Destruction Feels Like, finally hit 100,000 plays, which is more than I could ever, ever imagine. I wanted to say thank you. Hello, where's my other munchkin? Are you the cutest thing in the world? Oh, oh. Also, I am going to be having a merch giveaway. You can pick absolutely anything you want from the store, from sweaters to shirts to mugs, whatever it is. I will cover all of the costs for you just because I wanna say thank you for listening to my album and supporting my channel. So if you do want some free merch, make sure you don't forget to enter. <laughs> oh God. Okay, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting a little emotional because this is the first song I wrote that really changed everything on my channel. It really allowed me to have confidence in my songs and post them up. It all started from this October 30th, 2018. Holy crap. Cannot believe it's almost been two years since I uploaded this. It's crazy. Hello. So I remember exactly where I was recording this. I was in my bedroom. And this was, I think, a few days after Juliet had broken up with me. If you guys don't know who Juliet is, she is my ex-girlfriend. We did a few videos together. I was really hurt about the breakup just because it was very unexpected from my end. She had come over the night before I was supposed to like go on this um, five-day canoe trip. And I was packing my bags and I remember thinking, oh my God, like, what a good girlfriend, she's gonna come say bye to me, like send me off to camp and uh, nope, she came over and called it quits uh, and I was like bawling and crying and just so, at that point we have been dating for about almost a year. I still get a lot of messages from people asking me like, where's Juliet, where did she go? We can't find her on Instagram. I haven't really been in touch with her. The last time I spoke to her was like over a year ago. She seemed to be doing well. Yeah. If you're going through a breakup or something similar right now, I promise it gets better. Take it from me, two years later I really found my person and I just want to remind you that this pain right now is just temporary and you're gonna get back up on your feet before you know it. Please excuse the mess, I'm running out of space to put coffee. Check out my super professional recording studio. Totally not DIY. I think these are a bunch of blankets we found but this is What's recording been like for me? Don't underestimate the power of a closet. Oh my god. Way too close. After that happened, three months later, I sort of found myself in a better place. I think that just goes to show that after breakups, it's not the end of the world. You're most likely going to find someone else or um, develop a crush on someone. So that brings me to my next song, which is A Letter to My Crush. First of all, I look so gay in this video with my Canadian hat. I went on a date with this girl three times, never heard from her again. Then I heard from her again. We went on a fourth date, fifth date, and I actually uh, was seeing her for a couple months. This is something I've never shared, and you guys probably don't even know who she is because it was so short. But it was the first time I kind of got like a glimpse of hope after feeling really sad for a long time. Honestly, some of you are probably gonna say like, Marina, you've dated so many people. And honestly, yeah, I've dated a lot of people. I've gone on many dates, I'm not ashamed, and I've been in many relationships. And for me, I just feel like it's given me the experience to actually I know what I need and what I want in a relationship, which made me be able to find Alex and be so lucky that uh, I have her as my girlfriend. So I remember this girl had a twin size bed and it was really hard to sleep on. 
everything was going well until it didn't. She rejected me. <laughs> I have to go to the pharmacy uh, because I'm running super low on my antidepressants and my cholesterol medication. This is Alex's jacket. Don't tell her I stole it. Oh my god, sorry, my face is really close to the camera right now. It is so cold. It's colder than you think. It's like minus six up north. I'm really looking forward to summer. Whew. So yeah, she rejected me um, after I think like three months. Our personalities just weren't really compatible. I'm someone that needs to communicate a lot and um, I'm like very affectionate and for her it was okay to like text me like once or twice a day and not really like I don't know interact that much and to me that was a problem but I'm the type of person right like no matter what like I like to work things out I remember I came over and she's like we need to talk and I was like oh god not that again and at that point like I felt like I was emotionally invested in her but she wasn't necessarily reciprocating that you know that feeling you get when you're like oh my god i think i love this person it's kind of like in between like i'm not like fully in love with them but i know it's more than just liking you and i told her well you know like the reason why i've been trying and stuff is because i've been feeling these feelings that are more than just like i like you kind of thing and i remember in my head i was like i really hope that she says that she feels the same way and she wants to work things out and and she was like oh okay you can't even say those favorites back My phone! I'm back again. Joke's on me. I went to the wrong location. Right one. One person at a time. Got my happy pills. Finally. <laughs> it's so cold! Okay. Quickly. Look. Look. Oh my god, can you hear the wind? It's so windy! This is the snow. But look, you can see sort of like the little community here. I guess this would be the perfect time <laughs> to go into the next song. I've been really surrounded by nature recently and it's actually a really positive thing. <sighs> okay, that was a little too cold for my liking, so <laughs> I ran all the way back here. Um, I was gonna say the two songs really on my album that really, really expresses uh, the experience of going through clinical depression, anxiety, you name it. The first one is, you know, this is what depression feels like. The second song, this is what self-destruction feels like, which I'm so proud of. I wanted to talk about these two because those two things are about the same exact things, but they're completely different in so many ways. So I actually wrote this is what self-destruction feels like three years ago. I'll put in a video right here of me singing it with my friend Scott for the first time, going through my first really bad episode of depression. The line, like, you need to take care of yourself, my darling. Everybody around me, my friends, my family, like everybody t tells you like, oh, you gotta like take care of yourself. It's if they haven't been through the experience, like they don't understand what it feels like. It's easy to say like, get help, totally different thing to do it when you're in that mental state. You need to take care of your health, my darling. But they don't know how it feels to be bridge like I'm holding on a tight rope no I'm not coming home it's very powerful for me it's like you're almost like reaching that point where you're like I don't know if I want to be here anymore I'm holding on a tight rope Ever since then, I've been on meds. I've gone up and down, and um, that actually brings me to the next song. This is what depression feels like. And the the lyrics, if I'm being honest, I'm not okay. Doubled my dosage, and the pain won't go away. If I'm being honest, I'm not okay. Doubled my dosage, but the pain won't go away. 
naturally your body gets used to whatever you put in it. And so after a few years, my body kind of got used to the dosage I was taking and I started kind of feeling depressed. And my doctor was like, Kate, double your dosage. I doubled it. I was in a very bad limbo. Like it was just too much. I felt super numb. These couple weeks I haven't felt the same. One thing I've struggled with a lot, and you'll hear this in the chorus when I say I don't want to cry for help. I feel this burden burden in me where like I don't want to reach out to my friends and tell them I'm sad because I just feel like that's not fun for them. I don't want to cry for help. But at the same time, you don't want to keep pretending that you're fine when things are not. Yeah, it's just heavy, very heavy. And I feel like since this whole quarantine thing, I've been sort of in touch more with depression. It's been more rough, especially for people who are sensitive to changes. And I find that my way of coping with that, obviously, like, is waking up early, trying to get more sunlight, but also feeling like I've accomplished something, because depression can make you feel like you're nothing. And for me, I feel good about myself when I do things. So, like, filming this video, oh my god, a big spit just came out of my mouth. Filming this video and even, like, just continuing to upload music, make music, interacting with you really makes me feel less alone and makes me feel like I have more of a purpose here in my life. What did you think about the song that I wrote for you? Come down a bit now so you're in the frame. Ah, because I'm too tall? Yeah. I felt so lucky and it was really cool because I was in the studio with you and you made it come to life. Yeah. So I wrote it when we were dating, uh, I think three months into dating. And then we were still doing long distance because she was in Quebec. So the lyrics are like, I just want to see your face because I couldn't see her. I want to kiss you inside out because I want to kiss you outside out. Your face, I want to kiss you inside And also our one year's coming oh, up. Is one week. April 29th is our one year. So that's going to be interesting how we're going to spend it in quarantine. What are you really going to do? I don't know. We'll plan something fun, baby. It's not about the location. It's about the people you're with. Hello. Yes. What, what would you like, Mia? Are you gonna stop barking one day? I hope you enjoy that video that I just made for you. I hope that you do. It sounds so sad. Every time you use these chords, you can make any song sound sad. Look. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine, please hear you. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe in quarantine. I'll see you in the next video.